Welcome back to yet another grinder comparison. I know you love them, cause so do I. Let's dive into this. Now today we're gonna talk about four different 64 millimeter coffee grinders that are newer to the market. It is the second half of 2023 in filming this video and we have some new options in the market that I actually believe are gonna really change and landscape the next six to 12 months of purchasing for those who are in the market for a new grinder, replacing a grinder, it'll all make sense, stick with me. So today we're gonna talk about the DF64 version two. Now this is a big deal. This is a retrofitted DF64 that I think is gonna be very interesting for so many people. The DF64V, which is a variable speed DC brushless motor version of the DF64. And then over here we have a very unique grinder in the Kopi Concepts Diva, a Kickstarter grinder that is now on the market or coming to the market soon. That's some really interesting, quirky, but very unique features. And then lastly, we have the Zerno Z1, or in Canada, the Z1. I'm gonna be reviewing the version two in the near future, but I'm gonna to touch on the features of the version two and how that differs from this one right here, which is the version one. Before we dive into this, do me a huge favor, tamp that like button down below. It really helps this video get shared on the front page of YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already. But before we dive into this, let me tell you what I'm reading right now, Standard Magazine. Now, Standard is the sponsor of this video, and I wanna talk about why this is such an amazing magazine. Now, you've heard me talk about Standard before. I've talked about it years on this channel. And here we are in 2023, and you have still not subscribed to Standard Magazine, and I gotta ask, why? They're so good. Now, right now, I'm reading an amazing article about Mozambique. Now, let me ask you this. When is the last time you've read about the coffee origin of Mozambique? Huh? Probably not any time recently. And that's why you need a resource like Standard Magazine. With fantastic photos and pictures that are full color, nothing is black and white. Everything is in high quality, beautiful matte textured paper. Now, listen, you wanna try something out, but you don't want the obligation of a subscription. I totally get it. I'm there with you. So all you have to do is use the link down below and you can try it out. All you have to do is pay for the shipping. It's a free trial. That is an amazing deal. And so go try it out. Go try out a magazine. You can try it if you don't like it. You don't have to sign up for it, but I highly doubt that'll be the case because they are just so amazing. Not to mention every single magazine comes with some coffee from around the world. Go check out Standard Magazine. Use that link down below to support this channel specifically, and I would greatly appreciate it. It goes a long way for our growing channel like mine. And thank you, Standard, so much for sponsoring this video. Now let's start off with the more expensive grinders and then we're gonna work down to the budget friendly grinders and we'll end off with the DF64 version two, which is probably the most exciting grinder I've reviewed on this channel for the past little bit. So stick around for that. So let's start over here. This is the Zerno Z1 and we've covered it in past videos. I'll link one up here and then also you can check some down in the description below. So I won't spend too much time on this because I have covered this and we're gonna do a full review shortly, but there's a reason why I wanna bring this to this video because we're gonna be comparing 64 millimeter grinders. This is incredibly expensive at $1,250 US. Uh, there's not many people who are gonna purchase them except for the hundreds of people who purchase them and sell them out in five minutes. It's a wild world and even in times where the economy is unsure, people wanna spend this much money on a coffee grinder. And what makes this so unique to me is just the simplicity, the ease of use and the incredible results. Now this right here is fed with a little hopper up top. You put your beans in here. All this is magnetic, everything pops out real easily and the new model in the version 2 has an ionizer to reduce static as it's ground the retention on this is very minimal now you can put different aftermarket burrs in here like any of these because it's 64 millimeters and right now i have the 64 millimeter ssp multi-purpose burrs the auger that feeds the burrs the coffee beans actually pre-breaks them it breaks them down into smaller pieces this isn't normally seen on coffee grinders except for very premium professional coffee grinders and this for me has shown some better results in the cup. So that being said, I haven't had the opportunity to put the Z1 up against other pre-breaker designs, but we will do that in the near future to see what results the pre-breaker shapes and designs have on the final cup. But that's a whole nerdy topic for a whole nother video. But this is the Zerno Z1, and this is for me, one of the new gold standards for 64 millimeter bursts. So let's move on to the new grinders on the market as of late 2023. 
this is the Kopi Diva. And before I talk about it, let me just clarify something. The reason I do these videos, grinder comparisons, and showing so much about grinders is not to give FOMO for the person who already has this setup who wants to purchase something new. I wouldn't recommend people to upgrade to another grinder unless you're not happy with the results you already have. This isn't to create some kind of upgrade-itis, this, this FOMO to purchase the next best grinder. This is just to be educational for the person who needs to purchase the next grinder or is in the position to want to upgrade or purchase their first coffee grinder. Maybe you're just the kind of person like me who just likes to know what's going on in the market within coffee grinders or tech or whatever your favorite niche is. And if that's the case, then that's great. But I did want to give some disclaimer here because I definitely see this culture within coffee, which is just upgrade to the next best grinder because Kyle tells you to or some other YouTuber tells you to. Honestly, the most important attribute of coffee at home is purchasing great coffee itself. The grinder only can do so much for you if your core ingredient isn't that great. I digress, this is the Kopi Diva from Kopi Concepts and this is a very unique grinder. Now, originally put on a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, there was some kind of crowdfunding campaign for this grinder. Originally when this was crowdfunded, there wasn't a lot of options on the market for premium 64 millimeter burrs. Now this is incredibly unique for one main reason and for me, it's the fact that this actually needs no power cord. What? This one's a little crazy. Some of you are gonna love this. Some of you are gonna hate it. Some of you are just gonna be straight up offended. This has a battery. Honestly, this is pretty unique. It has a lithium battery that is rechargeable inside this grinder and it's variable RPM at 64 millimeters. Like I said, it has the Mauser Super Jolly Burrs in this grinder at 64 mils. And that is a burr set that we'll talk about in shortly. But really, what really stands out to me is the fact that this is battery operated. More than anything else, this makes it very unique. Maybe you're somebody who likes to travel and you wanna bring an end game grinder while you travel. I don't know, I don't know your life. I don't know what you do on the weekends. I'm not judging you. We are now in the world of battery operated end game grinders. What a world it is. I like the battery for home as well because it means that there's no cords out the back. So the burrs are actually horizontally laid right here. Very unique design for a flapper grinder. And if you didn't know and looked at this, you'd probably think it was some kind of conical grinder based on this shape here, but it's not. Let me show you how it works. So how this works is this has a slide on the top on the front fascia. Now it actually comes with a little bean feeder. I have misplaced mine. And there's also a stand for this to go on top of as well. I have also misplaced that or I never received it. I'm not quite sure. But regardless, I've had this for a few months and put it through a lot of testing. You take your coffee beans, feed them in the top here close up the chute, that all feels really premium and well machined. Great build quality here. In fact, one of the best build qualities I've seen in a long time, in this price range at least. But this one is all heavy stainless steel, very thick materials. It honestly, it feels incredible. It's actually engineered by Brandon who engineered or worked on F1 cars. Like that's just wild. And now he's making grinders. And this one is very pretty. I definitely think it's one of the better feeling grinders in the hand. Uh, aesthetically, you may love it or hate it, but this is how it works. You feed your beans up here, they're put through the chute here, and the bottom burr is actually placed on this little metal plate that has an attached zip tie. Now this zip tie is actually helping with retention. And sometimes coffee grounds can get stuck in this space here, but we'll talk about that shortly. But let me just show you, we'll make a mess real quickly at a low RPM so you can see how this grinds coffee. This is kind of silly. The Mazars Super Jolly Burrs are gonna be more of a traditional style burr. So if you want more traditional espresso shots that are very thick in body and texture, you wanna be able to add dairy to those, uh, you just want a lot of substance in your espresso shots, then yes, this would be the burr set that would do well for you. It'll be okay on filter coffee, but that's not where it's gonna shine, unless you like darker roasts. So let's talk about a few things. So first of all, really great design, as I've already mentioned. Build quality is fantastic, very unique, and the fact that it's a battery is honestly something I think is really cool 
tool. Is it worth the hassle of having to charge this or having a charger around or the replacement of lithium batteries, which is a whole nother topic? I'll leave that to you. But for me, it's really nice to see somebody creating something unique because we're seeing a lot of carbon copies in the industry right now. A lot of people creating designs that are similar to more premium designs or other brands designs, creating them for less money. You know the deal, you know what I'm talking about. That said, this does come in at a price point of $1,150 US since their Kickstarter has ended, which makes it $100 cheaper than the Zerno. I mean, that's a lot of money for a 64 millimeter flapper grinder that doesn't come with SSPs and will have some really big workflow issues. Let me show you some of them. One of those is feeding the beans. Now you can use this uh, thing here, no problem. You can feed it in there. It's a little awkward, but it's fine. And I actually really love the way that this slides open and closed. Also adjusting the grind size happens by twisting this dial. You can grow finer or coarser and being an espresso grinder, it'll be fine enough for all your espresso needs. It all feels really premium, very mechanical, very, very nice, very, very well engineered. But I think where it falls short is that workflow and that's something that really matters for most people. So one thing is that uh, you have two switches here. You have one on the back for the battery and the battery lasts about 40 hours. So for me, I've already had to charge it once. I've used it enough. Turn that on and then you can go ahead and grind by hitting this button on the side. Now on the other side, there is a dial that is labeled zero to 12. Now those represent how many RPMs you're gonna be spinning at. So these numbers times 100. So if you have the 12, you're gonna be at 1200 RPMs. 1200 RPMs is great. I think it's fast enough for espresso or any of your needs. That's pretty typical, maybe on the fast end, and you can go down as low as 200. You're not gonna grind at 200. I highly doubt most people are, but that option's there for most people. That said, where this grinder falls flat for me is the retention. And this being a single dosing grinder, retention is one of the most important factors in why we buy single dosing grinders. Now, the thing is, is that in theory, this should have very low retention. You saw that the burrs are just exposed to this metal chute and the coffee comes right down into your grind cup or your portafilter if you wanna put a portafilter under here. But it's not so simple. After it grinds, it shoots the coffee outwards as it would as a flapper grinder. As you saw when I took the burr off, it, it shoots it everywhere. And when you spin at the higher RPM, what happens is the coffee actually gets stuck on the sidewalls inside this funnel. Okay, so this goes to show you that the retention is good, but there's some things that you need to do to make it cooperate. The first thing being, after you finish grinding, you're gonna notice there's no coffee coming out of here right now. And then all of a sudden it will start to shoot out. You'll also notice that the coffee is not coming down in a single stream. It is just going absolutely everywhere. So RDT will be your friend here, the Ross Droplet Technique, adding some water to your coffee grounds. But this isn't a static issue. This is just a design issue. And the way that the chute in the funnel is created, the way that the coffee is coming off these burrs, it's actually being flung around inside that funnel and it makes it just a messy situation. The fact that I have a stand that I have to worry about in the first place for an expensive grinder like this, for me, feels like a design flaw. And then also after you're done grinding your coffee, you will notice that you are likely missing some coffee in here. And I mean, you can see that just happened right there. Uh, and then if I go ahead and turn this motor on again, we should see a bunch of grounds fall from those burrs or from this funnel. Yeah. So as long as you know these design quirks, it's fine. You just have to recognize that your workflow will need some adjustment. You're gonna have to turn this grinder on a few times after you're done using it. You can't really bang it or blow anything through here unless you have like a bellows because it's so sturdy. It's not gonna shake like some other grinders would. Now next up we have the DF64V. One of the newer models from the DF64 lineup. And listen, I know, I know what you're thinking. There are just so many of these DF grinders. On this channel alone, we have reviewed the DF83, the DF83 version two, the DF64, all the new updates for the DF64, mods for the DF64, the DF64E, and the DF64P, and the SD40, which is the little conical brother. And now we have another one. It just does not end, and you love it or you hate it, but this one here is the DS64V, and before you keep on scrolling through or skip to the next grinder, let me tell you why this one may be very different and why I think this one might be on the market for longer than its predecessors. Now, this model is a variable RPM grinder. That means it has a DC brushless motor in here, and this motor is probably one of the best feeling, sounding motors that the DF line has released to date. 
incredibly quiet. For me, I own the P64 from option O, one of my favorite grinders of all time. And there's a lot of reasons for that. If you don't know why, I'll leave a review for that down in the description below. The DF grinders have definitely had an inspiration from option O, in my opinion. That's not a bad thing. This is a grinder that is one third the price. Now let's start from the top. We have a bellows here. Now for me, this bellows is actually optional for the first time on the DF grinders. And we'll come back to retention in just a second. Now inside here, you have your burst set that is removed, twist off like that, and then under here, here, we no longer have the weird quirky interior of the DF64. This is more similar to the DF83 that uses a wave washer, but it also has a unique feature that it also sits in some of these rubber housings here to reduce vibrations. And then under here, you can see that wave washer that sits on the outside, then your 64 millimeter burst set, and then you have your burst set in here as well. Very simple, very clean, and you can definitely see they're taking inspiration from some really premium brands. And so in here we have our 64 millimeter burst set and the DF64 V has a new burst set that is a DLC coded burst set. Now this one here has a very unique design. Uh, I would say that this is somewhere in between like the SSP high uniformity burrs and something like the item mill burrs. It's kind of hybrid in between. Now it's not going to be as high clarity as something like the SSP multi-purpose. It's not going to be a clarity focused burr, but it's going to be a good hybrid burr that can do your espresso shots that are more traditional, maybe sacrificing a little bit of body and texture for adding a little bit more clarity and more transparency to your cup profiles. I think for a stock burr out of the box, this is going to be impressive for a lot of people and a lot of people who don't want to spend a ton of money on aftermarket options and very few people do i think this is going to be a great option burr for you these ones do prove to be a good hybrid burr that can do espresso textured shots milk based drinks if you want to but also if you want to do some more filter coffee and not have to break the bank on a filter coffee grinder separately this will be able to do it for you just don't expect the best results in sliced bread but i mean for the money you have the option here. Very easy to clean. And what I love about the DS64V and one of the highlight features for me is actually the grind chute. Now this up here is all magnetic. One of the issues with the DF64 was that grounds were often caught inside the ground chute. So people added mods to change the grind clumper, declumper. I've covered that in previous videos before. Again, I'll leave that link down below. And different mods may make sure that the ground chute was just as low retention as possible. This is magnetic, it pops right off. You can knock this into your garbage or clean it as you need. There's the grinds declumper right in the front of the grinder here. So you no longer have to take apart different screws and take apart the whole grinder to clean this out, which was just a pain in the butt and common for most grinders, by the way, this is an exclusive to the DS64, but the DS64V fixes a lot of those issues with the magnetic chute, which is something I would love to see on so many grinders. So here we go. This is one of the first times I would say that the DF line is innovating the industry and now i'm challenging a lot of other grinder manufacturers to take note and if you can do something like this this would help so many home enthusiasts ensure that their retention is low ensuring their coffee is always tasting the best and it results better on your grinders and reviews like this but also in the daily cup for those who don't care to clean their grinders all that often like i mentioned it is a brushless motor so you have the option to change the rpm highlighted on this a little quirky lcd screen on the side but i mean it's clear it's precise you go high, you can go low. It's lowest is 600 RPM and it's highest is 1800 RPM. And that's incredibly high. I wouldn't recommend going 1800. I'd probably set this around 12 to 1500 for espresso just for ease of use and speed. I find this a little weird. It kind of moves out of place. And then this dosing cup. One thing to note is that the DF line is trending towards ionizers in their grinders, which we're going to talk about in this next grinder in a second. So stick around for that. This one does not have that. And I don't foresee them adding that because with the magnetic shoot, I don't think it's necessary. It does make slightly more mess if you're grinding real coarse in a dry environment, but nothing to be really concerned about. Also speaking of mess, I'm not a fan of bellows. I try not to use this whenever I don't have to, because what I find is if I use a bellows, it will get all the retention out, which is fantastic. But in the process of getting that retention out, it will make more mess in the dosing cup by pushing air into the dosing cup, shooting fines everywhere. It goes all over the grinder and just makes more mess than I think is intended. So instead, what I'd like to do is I keep this lid off and then I just tap it with my hand, something I did with the optional P64 and it worked absolutely fine. On my P100, I do the same. And last Lastly, this is adjusted not by the actual collar, 
but by the funnel. And so you can twist this around here and that will change the grind size. Something again, we see from the P64. So for me, this is probably the closest version to a budget P64 with quality feeling parts and materials. There's no wraps here, it's all metal. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about with variable RPM and 64 millimeters. While this for me is one of the more premium feeling options on the market, there should be noted that the 64S from Time More is a grinder to not miss. Though it is not coming out till later this year, so if you need a grinder now, this would be a great option, but that is a grinder that would be very competitive because that one is gonna be about $100 cheaper than this guy, but I find this one easier to take apart and maintain, but the time more is very, very good, a little more compact and a little more budget friendly. Now last, but certainly not least, is this guy right here in this, my friends. This is the DF64 II. And we've got a lot to talk about here because finally, the DF64 may be one of my highest recommendations. Let me tell you why. It is on for pre-order on both Espresso Outlet and Me Coffee. For me, this is addressing all the concerns with the DF64 original. So the DF64 is something I've covered plenty on this channel. But for me, it was always a grinder I couldn't recommend with complete confidence. I felt the build quality was mediocre at best and the results were good, but there was a lot of compromises to get to those results. A great option for many people, but I thought there was a lot to improve in that grinder. For me, it started with the externals. The aesthetics of the DF64 for me were always very mediocre. And it started with the outside. Now this model here, the version two, follows suit with the DF64V and the DF83. Both of those grinders have a full metal body and this one here is the same. The dial is very different, it's all metal. There's no plastics here like the original DF64. Inside this grinder, we now have this anti-popcorning disc just like the DF64V. I think this is great because the DF64 was built around having a bellow system. And this one, like the DS64V, I'd recommend not using it. And then inside here, we have a brand new burst set. Now, like the DF83, they've added this onto the collar of the grinder. You can zero your grinder real nicely, very easy. Now we can undo the grind chamber here by twisting this just like the DF83. This piece pops off, which is all aluminum. And then under here, we have the upper burr carrier mounted on three rubber pieces here that pops off. And then we have this on a spring washer, again, like the DF64V and DF83. We have a theme going on here. You can see that they're listening to the feedback. They have learned from the complaints of so many customers and so many purchases and have upgraded this to make it much more refined than it was prior. Now in here, we have the same burr set from the DF64V without the DLC coating. The DLC coating is obviously a premium option. That coating costs a little bit extra and it will be an option, at least Joe said at Espresso Outlet, for the DF64 for version two, but out of the box, it has this stock burr. So from my understanding, no more item mills. It is this burr set that for me is much better. I think it's better for filter coffee out of the box. I think it's better for most people for doing espresso. You're gonna add more clarity to those profiles, a little more transparency to the cup profiles, but you're not gonna sacrifice too much in your body or texture. So I think it'll be a good hybrid for most people wanting a flat burr profile. These are easy to clean. There's no pieces, there's no screws, nothing like that. And then on the bottom here, you can see your bottom burr carrier. Now one feature I'm so excited to share with you that they've added to all the DF64 version twos, and I'll share the price with you in a second because this is gonna make it really appealing for a lot of people, is that they've added a plasma generator. What is a plasma generator, Kyle? What are we talking about? Now, coffee, depending on your climate, the humidity, you're gonna get a lot of static. We've addressed this earlier on some of these other grinders. The DF64 was known for making a mess, a lot of static, and you needed to add some water to your coffee beans before grinding them, depending on your climate, to ensure that you didn't have a ton of static, a ton of mess as it was ground. Now, this does have a grinds clumper, so as it's pushed out of the grind chute, it hits a piece of plastic to just reduce that static and help it get more well, less clumpy and just more uniform. Past that, we actually have a plasma generator. This plasma generator is reducing static even further. So once it comes out of the ground chamber, it is nice, uniform, not messy, and very, very easy to work with. I can say all this, but I think it'll be better if I show you. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. I know grinders that are more expensive that make more static than the new DF64 version two. 
Now a couple notes here, you probably noticed I didn't use the bellows. Like the DF64, I prefer to use my hand just to cup it through. You're gonna see a little bit of retention here. Obviously if I use the bellows, more is gonna come out, but just more aggressively, I think it makes more mess. It pushes fines everywhere. I'm just not a fan. I'd rather use my hand to cup it like that. Also, there is a difference between this and the DF64V in that it uses an AC motor versus the DC brushless on the DF64V. The big difference there is this is not variable RPM. So if you want that, you're gonna spend more money on the DS64V. So depending on your preference, there's, I think it's a $200 jump from Espresso Outlet from this one to the DF64V. That might be worth it to you, but I definitely think for most people, you might not need to. I think the DF64, this version two, is now gonna be the niche killer that we've talked about for all these years. And it actually is out of the box. You've got better bursts, you've got lower tension. All the quirks are kind of addressed here. The, the motor's a little loud. It still has that DF64 sound where it's a little vibrate -y. It's not crazy. It is a budget grinder after all. Not bad though, and much quieter than the original DF64. That one was a little bit annoying, but if you've used a DF grinder, you know what this grinder feels like. It hasn't changed, but they have changed the placement of the button to the side rather than the front under the portafilter forks. Great placement, but ugly button. It is bright red. I honestly don't think it looks as bad in person as it does in photos and video. So I don't think that's a reason not to buy this grinder to be quite honest, but it is something to be noted of. Now this grinder is currently sold on Me Coffee and Espresso Outlet like the DS64V. And the thing with the DS64 grinders is they don't have a vanilla price. Like you, they're not the same price everywhere you go. Companies will be competitive with one another. So you can get these at pretty good prices. And I've seen this one already as low as $399 US. I think this is now the new gold standard and that niche killer that we wondered whatever come would there ever be a grinder that dethrones the niche i mean it's been long dethroned by now i love your niche it's just the case the niche duo is a great option but it's more expensive but this right here at this price point is fantastic and one last note about the df64 version 2 that i got a list as a con here is the numbers for the grind settings the actual place where they are gets real scratched up and covered in fingerprints for me it bothered me and i would love to see this change with something a little more resistant to scratches and fingerprints in the long term but for now that's probably the only big complaint i have on this grinder so friends those are four new grinders here that I wanted to share with all of you. 64 millimeters is incredibly popular because there's so many different aftermarket options. You can get a grinder as low as around $400 all the way up to $1,200 with the same burr set, but incredibly different experiences. So I want to know which of these four would you choose? Do you like the Kopi Diva? Do you want to see more grinders with a battery like this grinder? Or do you like something like the DS64V that is kind of in the middle ground in terms of price, but has variable RPM? Or do you just want to go with more budget option or the most expensive option like something like the Zerno? Let me know what grinder I missed in this video down in the comments below. I'd love to read that for a future video to cover and let me know what other comparisons you want to see for any of these grinders in the near future. I'll be reading every single one of those comments down below. Be sure to hit that like button on the way out if you haven't already. I'll leave links for all of these down below. Some of them are affiliate links in full transparency. They do help out this channel. They don't cost any extra to you. Uh, I'll be giving these away to Patreons very soon as well as I'm giving away a DF83 right now to a Patreon because every single month I try to give away as much gear as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.